Let's add a custom 3D block model to our Minecraft mod. More in-depth topics for Minecraft modding available in the 121 modding courses linked below, covering writable and tameable entities, custom entity armor, and even custom entity inventories, among many more awesome topics. Oh! Alright, we found us back in Terrier once more, and in this tutorial, we'll be adding a custom 3D block model to our Minecraft mod. Namely, that will be the chair. Now, last time I said we're gonna add a chair. This is actually more the custom 3D model, and then the functionality of the chair, well, that's gonna be added in the next tutorial. Now, for the model of the chair, obviously, that's going to be a custom block, and it's going to look kind of like this. The block bench file will, of course, be available to you, and this time, we're not going to like go into detail on how this works in Blockbench, uh, but the Blockbench file will be available to you. I'm going to put the link to Blockbench in the description as well. And of course, you have basically everything for download. And once you have this, it is as easy as simply going to File, then Export, and then Export Block slash Item Model. This is going to export a chair.json, which is exactly what we want. And we also need the texture. So for that, we're going to right click and then save as. That's going to be the chair PNG, and once we save this one, we basically have, well, everything we're going to need in this case. We have the texture as well as the item, or rather the block model JSON file, and then we can proceed with the rest inside of IntelliJ. Now for this, we're going to need a custom class, a custom block class. Reason being is when we have, when we look at this chair, there's obviously a front and a back and two sides, right? So we need to make it so that it always like points into the direction that we're pointing in. Because otherwise, it will always be set down like this. Meaning that regardless of uh, like what it's going to be, the sitting part will always point to the north of the world, right? So this is world coordinate based, so to speak. So that would be kind of strange, right? So obviously, if we would want to make a table, then some of them, like some of the times, the table would be here, which would be obviously correct. But then some of the times, the table would be here, and then here, and then here. So that would obviously not be quite right. So it needs to rotate as well. We're going to facilitate this by doing basically two things. We're going to make this a horizontal block. So we're going to ha have a facing property, a block state property that we've seen previously, like a, a block state property we've seen already. And we're also going to make it so, well, basically we're going to see this in a second in the block states JSON file that it's going to rotate. So we're doing this by going to block custom. And here we're going to make the chair block over here. It's going to extend from the horizontal directional block class Hover over this to implement the codec method. Hover over this again, create constructor matching super. I'm going to change this to a public one. There we go. And then first of all, we're going to return a proper thing here. That's going to be a public static final map codec of type chair block. There we go. This is going to be the codec equal to simple codec method passing in chair block colon colon new. And then here you can simply return the codec and that's going to be that. All of the code that I'm writing is, of course, also available to you down below. So no worries there at all. Here we want to override two methods, get state for placement, as well as the create block state definition method. The block state definition definition method here is obviously needed so that we can add pbuilder.add and then add the facing property. Very importantly, that we add this, otherwise it's not going to properly work. For the state for placement method over here, we want to return this default block state that set value. And then we're going to set the value of the facing property to p context dot get horizontal direction dot get opposite. So what the thing that th this is going to do is it's going to look in what direction the player is looking into, and then it's going to reverse that. So effectively, what it's going to do is it's going to set down the block basically with the sitting well, with the sitting part facing towards us, and that's basically how the how this is going to be placed down. I think that that's pretty fair, and that is actually everything we're needing in this case over here. So we can go on to our mod blocks class and actually register the block, which is very, very straightforward once again. It's simply going to be public static final registry object of type block, of course. This is going to be the chair equal to register block method. This is going to be the chair over here. And the second parameter is a supplier of a new chair block in this case, of course, with properties of and then no occlusion over here not no collision very important no occlusion that's what we want so that we don't have uh, all of a sudden a like an x-ray model with this chair that would be kind of well stupid in this case we can go on to the creative mode tabs and add it over here as well it's going to be the chair right here the chair well uh, there you go that's going to be the chair 
And in terms of the code, that is actually everything we need. The rest all happens in the assets over here. Reason being is because we're going to, well, basically do the block states JSON file manually. The, there is a good reason for this. And the reason is that number one, uh, if you, you know, if you only add like one or two chairs in this instance over here, right, that like need a rotation that are specific for this, then usually you don't really need the data gen for that, right? Because it's like, if it's only one chair, then I, I would personally say one line, but or three JSON files only really makes sense if you had to do this JSON files like 10 or 20 times. That's my personal opinion on this. Uh, but regardless of though, uh, you could also do it with data gen, but we're, I'm choosing not to basically. So in under assets tutorial mode, we're first of all going to make a new directory called block states. Block states, very important. And I'm going to copy over the chair.json over here. And you can see overall, this is really not that complicated. And like I said, yes, you can create this via data gen, but um, I've chosen not to. The idea is that it's basically just going to rotate around the block uh, model over here that we're going to point to over here, depending on w what facing property the chair block has. That's the idea. It's also that add the translation and then we get to the crazy stuff. When I say the crazy stuff, I obviously mean the block model JSON file. So under models, we're going to make the new directory called block. And then we're going to copy over the JSON file. This is the JSON file that we have exported from Blockbench. Remember this? So if we were to go in here and see, this is the Blockbench JSON file made with Blockbench. And here in the textures, it's extremely important that you do not forget this. In the textures, tutorial mod colon. And then here, block slash chair. Because obviously, our our chair textures are going to be under the textures block folder. That is always why we need to double check this, that this is correct. Otherwise, it might not work. Now, similarly, we can now copy over the chair PNG over here. Chair block, right? There we have it. Block chair. Absolutely correct. That is the honeyberry bush. That's not what we want to look at. And there we have it. Last but certainly not least, we have the item model JSON file, which is super freaking simple. That is also, I'm just going to copy this over as well, because I mean, this is literally just one line. It just points back to the block model file over here again. So nothing too crazy. And obviously the block model file, it, oh, that one is a little bit more crazy, but that is also why we've exported it from Blockbench. That's the whole idea. Now, those are actually all of the steps that we need to do right now. Now, we're going to do one more thing. But first of all, I want to show you the block inside of the game. And then I'm going to add this. So I would say, let's turn to the game and see if it works. Oh, I found it back in Minecraft. And as you can see, the chair has been successfully added to the game. If I set it down, you can see it always points to me. Basically, when I set it down, exactly the way that we basically want this to be set up. And what you'll find, though, is that when I hover over this, well, the bounding box over here is a little bit well, a little bit too big, right? So how can we fix that? Well, that is done via voxel shapes. So let's take a look. Now, overall, voxel shapes are fairly simple to understand. So we're simply going to add one over here in our chair block class. So this is going to be a public static final voxel shape. It's going to be called shape over here in this case, equal to block.box. And then we need to put in some numbers. So there's going to be a 3.0, 0.0, 3.0, a 13.0, a 16.0, and then a 13.0 again. This is going to be returned inside of the get shape method. And that is going to get us our custom shape over here. Now, the numbers over here come from a very, very simple process. You basically go into your block bench file and you can say, well, couldn't we, you know, also get like perfect um, you know, perfect outline. Yes, you could. However, I always highly recommend not to do this because the crazier and the more complicated the outline, the worse the game is going to be slowed down because you really don't need perfect sort of, um, you know, perfect tracing and perfect collision and all of that. That is really not necessary. Now, when it comes to the line, you can, you could do like a small cube down here and then like a, a bigger one, I guess, for the, um, for the back right here. But also do note that the entire cube over here is a little bit bigger than 16 by 16 by 16. I think it actually extends to 18 to the top. And the way that this works is that we did, or I did the following. I basically said, okay, I really only want the borders to line up in, well, from the top, right? So I basically just do, okay, uh, this would be, this one should be one, one. So you go down to three and then to three here. And here you also do three and three. And then you basically have this. So that is where the three comes from, right? So we go three in and three 
in the z-axis and then we also go three in in the in the other opposite direction basically and that is how you get a 13 because 16 by 16 by 16 is the biggest of the biggest numbers so obviously if you go like in by three then you would turn up at 13 i think that that makes sense i also highly recommend as per usual if you're like i don't understand this play around with the numbers and see what happens that is literally the best way to possibly like try to understand things like this because if you just mess around with these numbers and you're going to see different results you're going to say ah that makes way more sense than me trying to reiterate it and like try to explain it three more times just play around with the numbers and see what happens the best tool that you have available uh in programming one of the best ones is control z you can literally just repeat or you know i'm i've changed this to 123 uh, everything broke the entire world is gone oh uh, that's fine control z there you go and we're back to when it works and with that let's jump into the game and see the result of this and here we are back in the game and if i now hover over some of the chairs look at this look at this it works totally fine now exactly how i wanted it to set up now of course like i said right we're still gonna have a little bit of um you know not quite accurate over here and we can even sort of clip into the back over here so yes it is okay if you were to do a short one or a small box here and then combine it with a box of the back do note once again though that if you do a box that is bigger than 16 by 16 by 16 that can have unforeseen consequences because obviously a block that is above it then the, the the collisions would sort of you know collide into each other not a recipe for like not a, not a good idea so i highly recommend against that but there you go, that is the custom 3D block model over here as a chair added to Minecraft. And that's going to be it for this tutorial right here. Next time in this video, we'll also make the chair functional so you can sit down on it. Hope to see you there. So, yeah.